Algebra 2, Lesson 20, Simplification of Radicals and Line Parallel to a Given Line. Okay. Uh, beginning in practice, we're going to go through A, B, and C, starting with simplification of radicals. So to simplify, uh, we'll take problem A, which is 4 times square root of 40 minus 3 times square root of 140. So the first step here is to uh, rewrite our radicals or simplify the radicals. Uh, we do that by using factor trees. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of 40 and we're going to start factoring that. That can be factored in 4 times 10. Uh, 4 can be factored in 2 times 2. 10 can be factored in 2 times 5. Okay. Once we're down to all of our prime numbers, we're going to start circling pairs. Uh, we've only got one pair. So each pair becomes a whole number on the outside and gets multiplied by any poly, any uh, whole numbers already out there. Any numbers that don't have pairs stay trapped in the radical and uh, get written that way. So this uh, t 4 times the square root of 40 becomes 8 times the square root of 10. Uh, 2 and 4 multiply to become 8. 2 and 5 group back together to become 10 since we couldn't take them out. Uh, then we go to the 140. So we'll start factoring 140. Uh, really quickly, that can be 14 and 10. Uh, from there, I've got 2 and 7. And here, I've got 2 and 5. Uh, so I've got a pair of 2s. They pull out to become uh, 2 times negative 3. So negative 3 times 2 gives me negative 6. Uh, and then the 7 and 5 are trapped in. So they become 35. <coughs> Uh, from here, we're going to check and see if we have any like terms to subtract, and we don't. Uh, if these radicals were both the same, for example, if this were a six times the square root of ten, uh, we'd have the yeah we'd have the same uh, terms or like terms, and we'd be able to combine them. But we don't, so our answer is just that for now. Uh, next, going on to practice B, uh, we've got the same type of problem along with a little bit of distributive property. So. Uh, we're going to take 3 root 2, multiply it by 3 root 2, and then multiply it by negative square root of 8. Uh, so when it comes to multiplying these, the whole numbers get multiplied by the whole numbers, the radicals get multiplied by the radicals. So 3 times 3 gives me 9. Uh, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. So I get 9 times 2. And then over here we get minus uh, 3 times one, uh, the negative 1 or the negative uh, coefficient of 1 is just negative 3 and then square root of 2 times square root of 8 gives me square root of 16. <clears throat> From here I'm going to keep simplifying uh, 9 and 2 combined to become 18 and then square root of 16 can factor into 4 times 4 and I'm not down at my primes yet but I see I've got a pair so I can go ahead and circle that pair immediately pull that out to become a whole number 4 so negative 3 times uh, 4 gives me negative 12, and there's nothing left in the radical, so my problem is now just 18 minus 12, which is 6. So my answer is 6. Um, last, I'm going to go to practice C. We have to find the equation of the line that is parallel to line 3y minus x equals 5, and also passes through the point 3, 3. So, uh, if you remember, parallel lines share equal slopes. So, this line is parallel to, what we're going to do is we're going to take this line and solve it for y. So, we'll add x to each side. We get 3y equals um, x plus 5. <clears throat> and the reason why we're solving this line for y is so we can find the slope divide everything by 3 and we get y equals 1 third x plus 5 thirds and again like I just said we're solving this for the slope since the line that we're looking for is parallel to this line we're going to take this slope and we're going to plug it into the line we're looking for so the line we're looking for is y equals 1 third x plus b now, we don't know what the b is going to be for our new line, but they will have the same slope. 
So we're done with this equation. We don't need anything else from it. All we needed was this number right here. Now we go to the equation we're working with and we know that our line passes through the point three comma three. So we can substitute the X and the Y into this equation. So instead of writing Y, I'll write three equals one third times three instead of X plus B. Now I can find out what B is. Uh, three times one third is just going to give me one. Uh, so then I've got three equals one plus B. Uh, subtract one from each side and then b equals two. So now that I know b, I'm gonna plug this into the equation that I'm working with, and the answer is y equals one third x plus two. And that is the equation of our line, which is parallel to this one.